Today we are talking about one of the most unique characters in the Marvel Universe when it comes to the comics and his movies, Eric Brooks aka Blade. And believe me when I say that it will take all my willpower not to do this every time I say Blade. Laser. Blazer. Anyway, so how does Blade vary from the movies and the comics? Like I said, unique situation this one. What with Snipes being a trailblazer for comic book movies and all. I'm Danny Baker and this is Six Degrees and today we're talking the differences between Blade on the pages versus on your screens. Obviously we've got Blade on the slate for 2024 with the man Mahershala Ali taking up the mantle and I'm pumped we've even heard his voice as Blade. Sure you're ready for that Mr. Whitman? As long as this writer strike stuff gets fixed. But the original Blade movies, let's say the first two, were great. They were ahead of their time. And look, if you see someone making something difficult for themselves, you've been given this line to throw at them. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate our bill. So Blade's history in the comics can really be split into two eras, the pre and post retcon. Blade started out as just a pretty athletic dude with ties to vampires who was immune to being turned but had no real powers. So in a turn up for the books, rather than a movie nerfing a character, as so often happens, they took him and upped his powers a bit. Post the success of the 1998 movie, there was a retcon in the comics to give him a load of extra vampire-like powers but without the weakness of sunlight. So we're going to focus on that guy as he's more interesting. The general backstory has always stayed the same though. Post retcon, his mum was pregnant with him and was living in a brothel. She gave birth but then she got bitten by a vampire, Deacon Frost, while the umbilical cord was still attached to Eric and then she died. But Eric survived, getting these powers and being brought up in the brothel. He later helped save Jamal Afari, a vampire hunter himself, albeit with no powers, who then trains Eric in the ways of hunting vampires. So Eric becomes Blade, the daywalker and scourge of all the vampires. He crosses paths with the biggest of the vamps, Dracula himself, many times, and he has adventures with Ghost Rider, Magic and some other dark folk in Midnight Suns. A few runs with Spider-Man, where for a bit it was explained that Morbius the Living Vampire had bitten Blade and given him new powers, but then they went back on it later on. He also had a run with Wolverine and our old mate Doctor Doom, there's a video on him here. So Blade in his retcon version as the proper Daywalker has some mad skills. He's so fast that he can dodge Deadpool's bullets, all while quip him, and strong enough to punch him through a crate of Beanie Babies. He's strong enough so that even when he's been drained of his blood after being proper stabbed in a ritual that will end the world, he can still rip some steel chains apart, only to be faced with some wear scorpions. It's okay though, he's strong enough to rip off one of their tails to kill the other one. Always the best way to deal with wear scorpions in my experience. He's got some good regeneration abilities with the retcon. In Doctor Strange Damnation, after getting hit by a hellfire infused Mjolnir, which is just left on him, putting his healing power to the test, he's better pretty soon afterwards and he's able to stab the ghost rider Thor who threw it at him right in the eye. He's generally just a beast. In X-Men Curse of the Mutants, he and a team of Slayers take on a load of Daywalkers led by Dracula's son, Zarus. And while they all get slaughtered, Blade withstands them all. And realising he's outnumbered, he commandeers a plane only to jump out of it as it's crashing into a mountain and survive the fall and steal someone's motorbike. He had his reasons, but some poor fucker's walking home. Speaking of motorcycles, he's strong enough to cut through Johnny Blazes with his sword easily. Have that, Ghost Rider. And speaking of weapons, he's got some insane accuracy. When Micromax shrinks and runs away from him in Marvel Comics Presents, Blade slings a dagger right in front of him, claiming to be able to amputate spiders with it. Hoping that's hyperbole, Eric. Spiders are key to keeping an ecosystem balanced. I live in Australia, I know this. He's got a very good sense of smell. I always thought that was a weird one for vampire powers, but he can sniff out Doctor Doom amongst his Doombots. Apparently he must use a lavender body wash. The Julian McMahon version definitely does. Doesn't matter though, because as tough as Blade is, Doom smacks him one. Very recently in the Dark Ages run, he took out Apocalypse and his old foe, Dracula in one. Very efficient Blade. But it's always handy to show how someone can take on one of the big dogs, and Wolverine is one of the best there is, etc, etc. And in the Wolverine vs Blade special, with some weird artwork, they go toe to toe, because each one thinks the other one is a vampire. And they're pretty even as they fight. Turns out it's just a big misunderstanding though, lol. Right off the bat in the movies though, ho oh, ho, bat, vampires, eh? He's got decent fighting skills taking down a club full of vamps. He's got sword fighting ability, and he's got mad skills with the boomerang blade. God damn, Wesley Snipes is cool as blade. That grin, that fist pump. In terms of powers, he's got the strength to chuck Dr. Jensen bloody far, and he can jump super long distances. All of this being a nice reminder of how average special effects were in the late 90s. 
He shows some big strength after the train tunnel fight when he grabs a train with one arm while holding Dr. Jensen. That hurts my shoulder just watching it. And because this film is pre the MCU, they don't massively dial up the strength aspect of Blade. That's kind of why I loved it as a young lad who was obsessed with fight scenes. Jet Li and Fist of Legend being my favorite at the time. But the Blade film showcased Wesley Snipes' fight skills a lot. It is a lot of examples of bad guys waiting patiently to attack one by one. There is a Roadhouse star throat rip in there though. And special shout out to this little interaction. <laughs> Nowhere near each other with those kicks. Come on fight choreographers in 1998, do better. Oh, that is a bit better. There's some more 90s effects than an all time reaction from Snipes, so good. <laughs> He's super fast here, showing some speed, flinging the needles at Stephen Dorff. Although the editing is very weird, that does not look like he's landing from that Spider-Man jump. Blade 2, it's a guilty pleasure this one for sure. It's got Donnie Yen, so it has points for that. But all of a sudden it looks like Blade's running like an old man, what happened? Oh it's okay, look how fucking cool this jump and landing is. The CGI has gotten better and they want us to know it. Almost as cool is the backflip and landing to decapitate this dude on the bike. Showing his superhuman abilities from the off, which is good. The fight in front of the lights is cool, again with some very shonky effects, but I like again that they're showing his abilities with this big kick. It's proper Matrix Reloaded CG territory, but bless him for trying to make him have that superhuman ability. Oh look, it's the cat from Red Dwarf. Oh, ooh, wee, how am I looking? <laughs> looking nice. That's a fucking obscure reference for you. The iconic scene coming out of the blood, all supercharged and ready to go beast mode. Again, we're seeing his fighting abilities, but these lot have taken a ticket at the counter and are waiting their turn to be called up. Just bum rush the guy. He does show some strength here, I guess, overpowering Ron Perlman easily, although he's got two hands over one. And again with a lovely slice, but these vampires in the Blade films do seem to have the consistency of melted butter when Blade cuts them. The final fight with Luke Goss from Bross. <laughs> Has more CG flippery, showing Blade is superhuman, and a brutal stab following by the kick is pretty cool. When Nomax swings him around, you can see Blade's durability when his head goes through the wall, but how the fuck are those sunglasses still on though? Blade Trinity is shit. Yes, Ryan Reynolds looks great, with a major upgrade from the comics in terms of looks, but everything else mostly sucks. More fights with lots of faceless goons queuing up to fight. More not very impressive running, more CG jumps and landings that do look a little bit better now we're in 2004 and showing his ability. All the running up the stairs and jumping about, he's not really out of breath, so I guess we're seeing his stamina here. And fair play with this boomerang blade throw and jump. That showcases his abilities a little bit more. And look, the final fight with Dracula from Prison Break is weak, so I'm ignoring it. So that's Blade. Laser. Blazer. Sorry. In the movies, he is undeniably cool, and he can sure fight lots of people when they queue up to get him, but he's just not quite as hardcore as the comics. Obviously, very rarely is anyone, except for you Toad, and you Ebony Moore. Anyway, please check out the other videos on the channel. There's a good one on Doctor Doom, you know. Like the video if you like this one, smash subscribe if you really like it, and for now, I'm Danny Baker, this is Six Degrees, and I'll see you later.